What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Recently, I built a super small form factor gaming slash emulation PC. I did a full video on the build and some PC game testing. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But today in this video, we're strictly dealing with emulation on this small form factor setup. Just to give you an idea of the size on this thing, on the right hand side, we have the Xbox One X and on the left, we have the small form factor build. As you can see, the build is fairly tiny and it's actually packing some pretty decent specs here. I personally would have loved to use a higher end GPU in this machine, but unfortunately, as of making this video, this is the best low profile card that you can buy. This is the GTX 1650. So yes, even though this machine is tiny, we do have a dedicated GPU. And overall, I've been really impressed with the performance of everything that I've tested with this tiny machine. So before we jump into emulation testing, I do want to give you a rundown on the specs here. So for the CPU, I opted for the Ryzen 5 3600. We have 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, boost of 4.2. Now this is definitely overkill when pairing it with the 1650, specifically for gaming, but I personally wanted to get as much CPU performance out of this machine, especially single core performance that I could, without overclocking for a decent price, and I really needed to hit that 65 watt TDP for this small case. And the Ryzen 5 3600 offers everything that I need at $180. I think it's a really good deal for a CPU like this. For the motherboard, I'm using the ASRock Fatality B450 Mini ITX, 16 gigabytes of Team Force Vulcan Z RAM at 3200 megahertz. The MSI GeForce GTX 1650, four gigabyte low profile. Like I mentioned, I would have loved to put something a little higher end in here, but this is the best I could get in a low profile form factor. A one terabyte Team Force Vulcan 2.5 inch SSD. The case is a good sorry AO2 Mini ITX. You can pick these up on Amazon for around 68 bucks. I'm still on the hunt for a better power supply. This is a replace power 350 watt flex ATX. Comes in at $30. It's a great placeholder and so far it's putting out plenty of power for this build, but unfortunately it's pretty loud. I need something a lot quieter. And finally, I added two Cooler Master 80 millimeter fans to the case to try to keep everything chilly and it's doing a great job. In the last video I posted on this machine, I did some thermal testing and some power consumption testing and everything's turning out really nice with a small build. Total cost on this machine was $772, definitely more than I wanted to spend, but you could bring the price way down on this by changing out that CPU for the 1600 AF or even the 2600. You could also bring the RAM amount down to 8 gigs and the storage itself. But like I mentioned, I wanted to get as much as I could out of the space I have, and I really didn't want to make any sacrifices. So now it's time to get into the testing. I'm running Windows 10 Pro, and the controller I'm using is an Xbox One controller. I'm connected over Bluetooth. So before we get right into the emulation section, there's always one thing that I like to check with these new PC builds, and that's how well it runs my favorite front end. And that's Big Box. This is my go-to emulation front end when I'm on Windows, and it works really well on this machine. And just to give you a heads up, this build of LaunchBox that I'm running right now is actually running from an external USB 3.0 drive. It's on a two terabyte Western Digital, and it works fine over USB 3.0. I just haven't had time to transfer it to the internal SSD. So as far as this thing handling emulation front ends, you shouldn't have any trouble no matter what you choose. But now it's time to get right into some performance testing. First up, we have PSP using PPSSPP on that 4X resolution, and I probably could have went higher with each one of these games you're about to see. And by the way, with each game tested in this video, I will have the name of the emulator on screen and the name of the game so you know what's going on at any given time. I'm also going to be running Afterburner. In the top left-hand corner, we have our FPS, our RAM usage, CPU usage, clock, temperature, and wattage. Plus, we have the same thing going on for the GTX 1650. Going into this, I was sure we weren't going to have any trouble with PSP, and it looks like it's handling it just fine. Now, there are a few games that are problematic on pretty much any system, those being God of War Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, Midnight Club Dub Edition, and Kill Zone. Every once in a while, you will get a frame dip here and there. That's just the nature of the game. For some reason, these games struggle with this emulator. The 
Next up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I set the resolution to 3200 by 2400, and I haven't had any issues with anything I've tested on this machine. Like a lot of emulators you're going to see in this video, as long as the game is compatible with said emulator, the game's going to run at full speed. I'll show you next time. Come on! I trust you. Take me to the hotel. Here's the Dolphin emulator running some GameCube games, I'm upscaled to 4K, and you're not going to have any issues playing these games on this machine, be it GameCube or Wii games. Now with some Wii games you might have to drop the resolution down a little bit from 4K, but overall it's going to handle most everything as long as it's compatible with the emulator. Sega Saturn runs like a dream on this machine, whether you're using the Beetle Core inside of RetroArch or Yopa Sanchiro. Next up, we have some PS2 using PC SX2. I'm using the 1.5 development builds, and everything that I've tested runs like a treat, even at 1080p. And to tell you the truth, a lot of this does come down to the CPU I chose, the Ryzen 3600. We have that boost clock of 4.2, but as you can see, we're sitting at 4 gigahertz here with about 20% utilization. I've tested a ton of lower clock CPUs in the past, and I just can't get this kind of performance out of those. Hold triangle and select an icon with the left analog stick. Hold L1 to precisely target your weapon.
Here we have some Wii U using the SimU emulator. I'm using the latest build as of making this video. And the devs have really come a long way with this emulator, especially with the integration of Vulkan. I'm getting really good performance in everything that I've tested. And I really do think it's time for me to go back and test some of my lower end systems with this emulator. With that Vulkan added, I think performance is going to have a big boost, even with the Ryzen APUs. But if you build a system like this, you'll be able to run anything that's compatible with the SimU emulator, even Breath of the Wild, at around 90 FPS. You will notice a couple dips here and there, and that's the shader cache loading. I just haven't done all of my shader cache with this latest version. So every once in a while, when a new effect comes on screen, you might notice the FPS go down a little bit. That's just the shader cache loading in the background. As soon as all of this is hashed out, the game's going to run at a constant 90 or even higher. So here's Zinnia, the Xbox emulator running Red Dead. You might notice we have a very low frame rate here, and this really comes down to the development on the emulator itself. There are some games that are going to run at full speed, but personally, I'm not really big into this emulator until some more development goes on, so this is the only one I tested in this video. And finally, at least for this video, we have RPCS3, the PS3 emulator, Tekken 6, running at full speed, no issues whatsoever, we're getting a constant 60 FPS and the game is fully playable. In the past few months, the developers for RPCS3 have come a long way with this emulator. Even six months ago, I could hardly get 60 FPS in Skate 3 on my highest end machine. 9600K overclocked to 5.1 GHz with an RTX 2080 Ti. But with these latest builds, Skate 3 is running at 1080p, 60 FPS, no problem on this machine here. And the sound is also fixed, so this emulator is coming along really well and it's awesome to see Skate 3 running at 60 FPS on a machine like this. So overall, this little machine does a great job with emulation and PC gaming. Yes, there are tons of different combinations that I could have chose here, but I was really shooting for the highest single core performance, and that led me to the Ryzen 5 3600. Really awesome CPU coming in at $180 as of making this video, and in my opinion, it's well worth it. And as for the GPU, I needed a low profile unit for this case here, so it led me to the 1650. It's the best you can get right now as of making this video in a low profile form factor. If they released the TI version or even the 1660 TI version, then I would have went with that. But right now, the 1650 is the best I could get in a low profile form factor at the time of building this. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I personally think this little machine does a great job with emulation. If you're interested in checking out the build and some PC gaming tests, I'll leave a link to the first video I made in the description. I also have links to all the parts I used in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.